Last year, MLB reshaped its playoff format, and this year, it's making some people extremely angry. It's also contributed to players talking to players, that player getting revenge on the other player, and fans torturing the other player out of town. It led to a manager that made a decision so controversial, it may have not only cost his team the season, but threw the whole baseball world into outrage. According to some, it's caused some of the best teams in the sport to choke their seasons away, while also allowing some of the most unsuspecting teams to shock the world. In 2022, MLB expanded its playoffs from 10 teams to 12 teams. Instead of two wildcard teams battling in a one-game playoff to advance to the first round, there is a new first round. The four best teams now get a bye, and the three wildcard teams, as well as a division winner, all face off in a three-game series to see who advances, leaving more room for chaos and for people to complain the system is broken, which started in the very first playoff game in 2023, which was literally the lowest attended playoff game in over 100 years. Yes, less people came to this playoff game than the average MLB regular season game this season. And despite the Rays winning 99 games this year, less people went to this game than went to the Royals' last regular season game. They lost 106 games. But what's even crazier is that attendance in MLB is up close to 10% this season, the highest increase in 30 years. So how does this happen? Since 2008, the Rays have the third most wins in baseball. They've made the playoffs each of the past five years and started the season 13-0. and By May, they led the league in an insane 20 different categories and cruised into the postseason with 99 wins, all while having the fourth lowest payroll in baseball. And that might be the problem. They're known for trading their expensive big name players for cheaper players who end up being just as good. It's great for sustained winning, but for fans, it's hard to get attached to players. They went to the World Series only three years ago. Six of those players were on this team's postseason roster. They never signed any large long-term contracts unless it's Wander Franco, widely considered one of the youngest and most valuable players in the league on a great contract. But now, he's on administrative leave after allegations of a relationship with a minor and may never play in MLB again. They constantly take cheap pitchers nobody wants because of injuries and turn them in to some of the best pitchers in the league. However, past injuries increase the chances of future injuries. So although this strategy succeeded in getting them the second best pitching staff in the league according to War, it also might be why four out of five of their starting pitchers on opening day were out for the season by the time the playoffs started. But even despite all these injuries and misfortune, they went into this series against the Rangers as favorites, then immediately played their worst game of the year, making four errors and scoring zero runs in a game one loss. But even a performance this bad was completely overshadowed by how little fans came to this game. For one thing, it was on a Tuesday afternoon, which definitely doesn't help with attendance, but the last place Rockies also played on a Tuesday afternoon a week before in the regular season and somehow still drew more fans. For the Rays, attendance has always been an issue. With traffic, their stadium is about an hour away from the city of Tampa and is located in a spot that has less people living within a 30 minute radius than any other MLB stadium by far. But a team as good as the Rays should be able to overcome this. So there was hope game two would be better. It wasn't. They got blown out, ending their third straight disappointing postseason, getting swept for the second year in a row, and attendance was just as bad. The other three wildcard series matchups were the opposite. It featured sellout crowds. It featured the Phillies dismantling the Marlins like everyone expected. And also the Diamondbacks sweeping the Brewers. Under the old format, the Diamondbacks wouldn't have even made the playoffs and the Brewers would have been in the next round automatically for winning their division after proving themselves in a 162 game season. Instead, their season ended after only two games. For the Brewers, this might feel unfair, but for the AL Central winning Twins, who were in that exact same position, not so much. They might like the new playoff format more than anybody else. 
They have the most painful, embarrassing, and statistically impossible streak in all of sports. Going into this wildcard series, the Twins had not won a playoff game in 19 years. What makes it even worse is they made the playoffs seven times during that stretch and went 0 and 18 in playoff games. That is pretty much impossible. Assuming each team has a 50% chance to win each game, the odds of that happening is 0 .0003% or 1 in 262,144. That is the longest playoff losing streak in North American sports history. The last time the Twins won a playoff game, Doug Flutie was the quarterback for the Chargers. Pluto was still a planet, and YouTube hadn't even been invented yet. The drought lasted 6,938 days. During that time, Robinson Cano played an entire 17-year MLB career. When they last won, Twins rookie Royce Lewis was only five years old. He came to bat in his first playoff game ever and hit an absolute bomb. Two innings later, he hit another one, and that was enough to break the streak. The Twins won game one, putting the Blue Jays in a winner-go-home situation. And what transpired? through the baseball world in a complete and utter frenzy. The game was started by Jose Barrios facing his former team who traded him. He dominated, quickly striking out five batters. The hits he gave up were all weak contact and pitched three innings without being in danger of giving up a run. He was rolling. Then he walked Royce Lewis. And this one walk was enough for the Blue Jays to take him out of the game. But why would anybody do this? Barrios had faced every Twins batter, and according to the numbers, pitchers' ERAs increased almost an entire run the second time they faced the lineup. He was about to face a lefty who hit Barrios a lot better than righties, and they had Yusei Kikuchi available. He's not as good as Barrios, but he's very good against lefties, and unlike Barrios, hadn't already faced the lineup one time. He immediately gave up a single, then faced seven more batters who almost all ended up being righties because of pinch hitters, walked a guy, gave up another hit, and two runs scored. People lost their minds. The Blue Jays never recovered and lost 2-0, and everyone blamed it on the decision. Their infielder, Whit Merrifield, publicly said he quoted hated the decision and also alluded that decisions like this aren't even made by the manager. Instead, the front office and analytical departments dictate when a pitcher comes out based on algorithms and numbers instead of feel and common sense. Their GM came out publicly saying this was not true, it wasn't the front office's decision, and completely the manager's call, because nobody wanted to take credit for this. It may have cost the Blue Jays their season, but funny enough, the Rangers pulled almost the exact same move a few days later, and it worked perfectly. After pulling Andrew Heaney in the fourth, they held off the Orioles in a 3-2 win to kick off the second round. Later that night, the Phillies knocked down the Braves, and the Diamondbacks dominated the Dodgers. After day two of the divisional series, teams with 92 or more wins, who theoretically should have had the advantage in this format, were 0-7 in the playoffs. The teams with first round buys were 1-5. The Orioles, who had the second best record in baseball, earned a buy. They got swept. Their manager seemed to think that the buy actually might have hurt them, saying, quote, it doesn't help and admitting it is a long time off. Under the new format, teams with a buy have five days off before playing their first playoff game. Teams with a bye can rest their pitchers and line up the rotation, which is a massive advantage. But many major leaguers say for hitters, taking five days off affects their timing and is the last thing they'd want to do when they're playing well. The Diamondbacks, who wouldn't have even been a playoff team two years ago, played in the wildcard series, got no rest, then swept the 100-win Dodgers, who only scored six runs in three games. Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman, who are going to finish second and third in MVP voting this year, when they combined one for 21. Dodgers manager Dave Roberts said it wasn't an excuse, but admitted that, quote, the five-day break isn't ideal. But the conversation about the playoff structure being unfair mainly centered around the Braves and Phillies series, which ended up spiraling into an all-out beef. The Atlanta Braves were the best team in baseball this year. They had the highest slugging percentage of all time, tied the 1927 Yankees with the highest WRC plus of all time, tied the home run record this year, and went the entire season without getting shut out at home 
once. Their very first playoff game, they got shut out at home. Down 1-0, they pretty much had to win game two to stay alive, and things got worse. They not only scored no runs, but were getting no hit into the sixth inning, putting up 15 consecutive innings without scoring a single run in the playoffs. The Phillies, on the back of a JT Realmuto homer, scored four and had a 93% chance to win this game. But in the sixth, the Braves finally got a hit. That scored a run. An inning later, Travis Darno hit a clutch two-run shot to lower the lead to one. Then in the eighth, with two strikes and two outs, Austin Riley hit a deafening homer and the place went crazy. This was the Braves' first lead all series, and they only needed three outs to win the game. Rocio Iglesias came in to face the heart of the Phillies lineup, and Nicholas Castellanos, representing the go-ahead run, hit a shot. And somehow, Michael Harris made the catch. Bryce Harper would have scored the tying run, but since Harris caught it, he was way off the base and had to get back to first or the game was over. The Braves got him. The reaction in the stadium was so loud, it registered as an earthquake on two nearby Richter scales. After the game, the media was in the Braves clubhouse talking to players when some of them overheard Orlando Arcia repeatedly saying, quote, at a boy, Harper, seemingly trolling Bryce Harper for his base running mistake. This was reported and spread everywhere on the internet. The Phillies took it personally. They responded by wearing Deion Sanders gear to game three, a reference to Deion saying his team's game was personal when their opponents talked about him earlier this year. The atmosphere even made the Braves earthquake game look weak. Phillies fans booed Arcia, made signs pointing out to his weak postseason stats, and in the third inning, Bryce Harper hit a bomb and stared down Arcia as he rounded the bases. A few innings later, he hit another one and stared him down again. The other Phillies player to wear Deion Sanders gear, Nicholas Castellanos, also hit two home runs. This blowout put the Braves in a must-win situation. Phillies fans chanted that they wanted Spencer Strider, the Braves' starting pitcher, before the game was over. Tortured him in the dugout. Tortured him in the bullpen. Arcia was getting attacked so hard, he lashed out at fans during the game while in the dugout. And on the back of two more Castellanos home runs and a catch on the warning track to save the game, the Phillies eliminated the Braves for the second year in a row. As of now, all 100 plus win teams have been eliminated from the playoffs. But is this actually the new playoff format's fault? It seems accepted throughout baseball that having an extended rest can mess with a team's momentum and timing. Knowing this, it's still very unlikely any team would rather go through the wild card round than get a bye. Not only does the rest allow teams to rest their bullpen, line up their starters, they're also avoiding the risk of losing a three game series where anything can happen. Teams with more rest this postseason are a terrible four and 10, despite all being favorited. However, it doesn't really seem this trend is gonna continue. Fangrass found that historically, teams with four or more rest days versus teams with two or fewer rest days are 24 and 11. The large sample suggests that more rest is actually the better option. The new playoff structure gives more opportunity for upsets as well as chaos and wildness, which we've seen. The commissioner seems to prefer that, but did say the league could review the format. The past two seasons with the new format, teams with a first round bye are three and five, only advancing 37% of the time. Under the old format, they advanced 51% of the time. This is a stark difference, and if this trend continues over a five to 10 year period, MLB will probably have to make some changes. However, it's only been two years. There's been many other two year stretches where the top four seeds have advanced even less under the old format. Long-term data shows this probably won't last. Plus, teams like the Astros seem to have no problem with rest. They had more rest days than game days during the postseason last year, and they won the World Series, playing 13 games 
in 30 days. This year, they're doing it again, handling the Twins despite all their momentum and are squaring off against their rivals who they've literally been fighting all year. So it can definitely be done. The Rangers, who they are playing, have yet to lose a playoff game, so it's hard to say they don't deserve it. Same thing applies to the Diamondbacks, who are also undefeated. They definitely earned their position and going into the most intimidating crowds baseball's ever seen, they have a chance to prove it.